welcome back to another episode of Second Chance Garden Video. So this winter, 2014-2015, has been quite challenging for me as far as my indoor garden goes. So I figured, you know, um, I would do a video to actually cheer myself up a little bit <laughs> to show you the ones that are actually actively growing. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that this becomes uh, kind of an uh, inspiration for myself first and foremost. And uh, the winter is almost over, so I can sort of regroup everything and gear up for spring and summer. So that is the plan. Now, here we have a goldfish plant. It's widely known as goldfish plant, but I will put another um, how should I say this, a proper plant name, I believe, on the screen. Um, for one, I can't never remember it, and for two, I wouldn't be able to probably pronounce it anyway. Uh, but it's a goldfish plant. The foliage is really um, waxy, fleshy, and round, tiny leaves that are pretty attractive. And the flowers look like goldfish in orange or some varieties would have maybe darker orange close to red the one that i have is in orange um, now this one is not flowering so you wouldn't be able to see it first and foremost let me explain why it's bagged okay so i purchased this plant last summer late summer and uh, from a local florist it was looking very lush um, branching out all over the place and the flowers all over the place it looked very attractive and it stayed that way for about two months and a half or so by november the leaves were start dropping like nobody's business they were dropping every day and i have a pretty bad eyesight so it took a while for me to realize that it actually had a massive spider mites issue they were already webbing and everything. It was terrible and really heartbreaking. So what I decided to do was to just chop them all off and start fresh. It's very unfortunate, but I was hoping that uh, I would do this plant a favor and just get rid of spider mites completely. It was to the point where, you know, like spraying it with soapy water and all that stuff, I don't think it mattered. The leaves were gone, like they were dropping. So anyway, I cut them down to, you know, like main branches, the stems. Um, they're quite woody, so I wasn't sure if I could expect any new growth. And, uh, you know, just to keep the humidity in, I bagged it. The, one of the favorite things or, or the most effective things that I do indoor is when in doubt, bag it. So, so I did. <laughs> and, and it stayed that way. As you can see, I'm not closing this bag completely. I left a bit of a space underneath just so that the air would circulate and it doesn't suffocate the plant and it seemed to be working and it still retains the moisture as you can see here you know you see moisture inside of the bag a little bit and it sat on my sunny windowsill for the entire winter say like 10 days later uh, you know after i chopped it down completely i started to see some green bits coming out so it was really promising and after that gradually slowly you know, all the leaves came back and started growing again. And I'm going to lift this bag up and take it out gradually. The only thing is that the leaves are very, very tender at this point. So I don't want it to go too forceful with it. But, so I'm removing this very slowly. I'm a bit crumbsy, so I, I don't even know that I'm doing this okay. Might be a bit of a casualty there, but here we go. So, there. 
the new leaves are coming out. Not, you know, this, some of the branches are still completely without leaves and I am not sure, you know, like here, all these. I don't know if they're completely dead. As far as I knew, when this whole spider mites fiasco was going on, the root system was fine. But maybe the shock of being pruned so drastically might have done it. So this part, almost like one third of this side, I don't see any growth. Um, I'm just going to wait to see what I want to do about it. I may just, you know, really chop them all off to the, the soil level. That's very possible. But as you can see, some of them have, you know, grown back quite a bit. And um, yeah, they're still very small, but I look at it as I gave this plant a little bit of a head start during the winter time because this all happened in December, January, February, and that's not too bad, really. So I hope that this summer it's all going to grow back really fast. That's what I'm really expecting. And hopefully by, you know, the August and September, I may be able to see some flowers. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's see how this goes. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited that at least some of them will come back. And I'm going to put this bag back on. I might pause this video while I do that because it's going to take a bit of time. Okay, so the bag is back in place. And uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that it, it has a saucer attached at the bottom of this pot. So I've been bottom watering uh, for this plant so that I don't have to remove this bag all the time just to water. If I do that, I might be damaging some of the very tender leaves for this plant and I don't want to do that. So anyway, this is my goldfish plant in its recovery. The next one that's doing quite well and unexpectedly well um, is my African violet. Um, I feel bad saying this, but um, frankly, African violet is not my thing at all. I'm not that attracted to what it is. Um, the flowers are great, but I'm not a huge fan. So I just only have this just to see if I could propagate off of this plant as an experiment. So I got this um, about a year ago or so and I didn't expect anything that I thought that maybe I would just completely fail just because I'm not all that interested in, in this plant. Um, the foliage is great, you know, um, uh, it's got this uh, hairy matte finish to it, um, very thick and lush, um, there's nothing wrong with it. But it's growing really f um, good um, for what I do, I only water it and I place in a very sunny side of the window. That's all I do. And it's been doing great. Of course, it hasn't really flowered all that much during the, you know, the winter time, the past three to four months or so, but that's okay. Um, it flowered a bit, say like um, a month ago or so, it's uh, right here, it's the dead part that I need to pull off a little. <laughs> But all in all, it's doing really well. It had no issues with um, diseases or bugs or anything like that at all. And it just keeps growing. And uh, I keep taking some bottom leaves off just because it just it has no place to grow anymore. But it's going very well. Now, speaking of propagation, this one was not an easy one, you take one of these leaves or, you know, uh, or a few off and they cut the leaf diagonally down here and uh, you would um, stick it in the um, sterilized soil media and to keep the humidity in. It takes a long, long time for this leaf to produce roots as well as a baby leaf sometimes two or three of them and it's so it's not as easy as other house plants propagation process now I will show you what I have
this is the propagated one off of this plant. So I've cut four leaves and only one succeeded after three months of waiting during the summertime. And you're talking about summertime, it's not winter time. And it took about three months for me to even see anything coming off of one leaf. So what it was um, before was that very, very tiny, tiny leaf coming out of the base of the mother leaf. And when I tried to lift it up, it actually fell off with one tiny root. That was it. And I placed it again. I bagged it just to be careful. And uh, four months later, this is what I have. Now, it got a bit of a water damage on top so that the foliage is not looking very good, but it's completely rooted and uh, it's doing okay. Eventually, the new leaves will replace these ugly ones so that, that I can just, you know, keep trimming it and uh, it's going to look just like this one. So, despite the fact that, the, you know, African Violet is not my favorite, it's doing quite well. So, it is encouraging. Um, some people say that it's not so easy to grow, so I'm pretty proud of it. Um, I might even try doing another cutting for just the heck of it. Okay. So the last one that I wanted to show you is something that I did a video for. So that is um, Peperomia prostrata and I share that with you as uh, one of my favorite plants. And I just wanted to show you the propagated part of it. And, and I, I just wanted to show you what the growth is like. So this was part of my previous video. And uh, this is how it looks. I'm going to zoom in a bit just so that you know what I mean by this. Okay, so just to show you the proof that it's doing well is this right here. This part, this tiny part coming out, that's a new growth. So you know that this has been rooted completely and it's putting out more new shoots. So that's one of them. I got a couple other ones. Let's see. How about this one right in the middle? So this one is also putting out new shoot right here and right there and then some right here. Well, the, the one coming from the next one is just kind of invading the this cup right here but that's okay um, I just let it be because it's just it wants to grow then I, I just let that do whatever it wants to do so anyway so that's new growth right here and also this one let me see if I'm showing it right here yep so this is a new one that's okay going out and this one's a funny one because it just keeps growing and growing and growing, you know, just the lengthwise, but it's not putting out new shoot. But that's okay, it's looking quite well. Okay, the next one, here we go. This part, this tip part is putting out new shoots, so you know that it's doing well. So, what I do with these, first I use um, non sterile, well, it is sterilized soil media. Yeah, it needs to be sterilized so that, that it doesn't create any fungus or mold issues while it's in a very high humid um, environment in, in this container. So um, I normally use a mixture of vermiculite, you know, perlite and uh, cocoa core mixture, as I might have showed you in another video. Um, then once I see a proof of some new growth, I start to add more nutrients to it. So without repotting or transplanting, I just add the nutrients um, in liquid format. So this is what I have here. Um, this liquid, the water, is from my fish tank. Now the color 
is a bit darker. This is not a natural fish tank color. It's not that dirty. Um, it's uh, kind of like a yellowish color here, almost like a ginger ale a little. Um, it's because I've normally, you know, I always add molasses to it. Just a couple drops of molasses. It has a good nutrients and coupled with fish tank water, I figured it, it would probably help the plants. So I would usually put this in like a smaller cup, cup like this one. And I have a tiny pipette. Um, I have a few of them. And I would just take some water out by using pipettes and just sprinkle all over. That's that's what I do. And that that's about it. And it seems working. Um, it's not dying, so I figured it's doing some good to it. The soil, again, itself doesn't have any nutrients. So once it starts to put out new shoots, I wanted to promote that growth. So by doing so, you know, um, to do so, I use this fish tank water with um, a touch of molasses in it. And I would cover this thing and just put it back on the heating mat. Um, what makes a difference is that the humidity definitely helps, as I said before, but also the heat coming through the soil definitely helps for this particular plant. So it is sitting on a heating mat constantly, and um, that seems to work well even during the winter time. Okay, so that's it for my update this time around. I hope you enjoyed. I certainly did. I'm glad to show you what's working out while there are many things that are not working out in this space. Anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to write your comments. Thank you very much for watching.